Now for this first part, what I would encourage you to do is draw a sketch. Draw a sketch something along these kind of lines. I mean, I can't draw railway tracks, but we're just going to leave them as circles like this, okay? So we've got our two trucks P and Q, P with a mass of m kilograms and Q with a mass of 3000 kilograms. And we're told that before they hit one another, let's just mark in that this is before, before they hit one another we're told that P is moving at 15 meters per second towards Q. And we're also told that Q is at rest. So you could put another arrow there saying zero meters per second, or you could write just at rest, it's up to you, okay? Now, P hits Q, and then we're told that after the impact, and you could draw this diagram again if you want, but I tend not to, I just write after, and then we're told that after the impact, P reverses direction, so P is going to be going obviously to the left and we're told it's going at 3 meters per second. And Q moves off with a speed of 9 meters per second. Well obviously it's got to move to the right if they hit, okay? It won't suddenly decide to move to the left, so might as well put that in then as 9 meters per second. Now in the first part of the question, we've got to find the magnitude of the impulse exerted by P on Q. And to do this, what I would want to do is put an impulse arrow acting on Q. When they bang into one another, P exerts an impulse towards Q in that direction. I'm going to call it I. It also turns out that there's an equal and opposite impulse on P, acting towards the left. Now, when they ask you to work out the impulse of P on Q, it's this I, but it doesn't matter, you could work out this I, it would still come out, or should do, to exactly the same value. But I'm going to consider this particle purely because we know everything about it. We know its mass, we know the initial velocity, and we know the final velocity. Because if you're asked to work out impulse, you should know that impulse equals the change in momentum. Let's just write that in, change in momentum. And we need to just write that out as a formula. Change in momentum, that's the final momentum. Remember, momentum is given as mass times velocity, so it's final momentum minus initial momentum. And this would give us the value of I. Now we're dealing with vector quantities here, so we need to have a positive sense. So this is the place I always find people tend to trip up on. So put a positive sense down. And that positive sense is in the direction of the impulse. So when we look at this, we've got plus I, okay, for that impulse, equals the final momentum, the mass 3000, multiplied by V, the final velocity. Well, it's moving at a speed of nine meters per second to the right in that positive sense. So that's gonna be 3000 times nine. Then we've got minus, the mass, which is 3000 again, multiplied by the initial velocity. Well, it was at rest, so it would be simply zero. And if we work this out, you then end up with 3000 times nine, which is 27,000. So the units for that impulse would be Newton seconds. So there's our impulse, I, okay? acting on Q. So there you go. I hope that's given you some idea how you could go about that.